My dearest friends in Christ, I thank God for who He is and what He has done, what He is doing and what He will still do. Especially in the lives of our listeners, I believe and thank God for the transformation our music messages and the movies are doing in the lives of people all over the world. The Lord has come our way again with a special message that will skyrocket you to the pinnacle of success. In Jesus' name. Amen. Go with me to the Old Testament of the Scriptures. First Chronicles chapter 4 from verse 8 to 10. First Chronicles chapter 4 from verse 8 to 10. I read. Koz was the father of Anon and the Zoriba, and the ancestor of the clan's descendant from Ahahel, son of Harun. Verse 9. There was a man named Jabez, who was the most respected member of his family. His mother had given him the name Jabez because his birth had been very painful. Verse 10. But Jabez prayed to God of Israel, Bless me God and give me much land. Be with me and keep me from anything evil that might cause me pain. And the God gave him what he prayed for. My dearest friends in Christ, let us pray. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for a gift of life and the good health. We thank you for our listeners all over the world, the souls you entrusted unto our care. Thank you for the special grace available for us in this message to nourish our souls. Papa, let this particular message bring immeasurable revival and restoration in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. My dearest friends in Christ, permit me to take your mind back to the passage we read before prayers. First Chronicle chapter 4 from verse 8 to 10. The Bible says that there was a young man called Jabez. The name Jabez means pain. It means sorrow. Because his mother gave birth to him in excruciating pain. So if you call Jabez a pain or sorrow instead of Jabez, it was not an offense or an insult. When Jabez discovered the meaning of his name, as he was facing all kinds of trials and challenges, he said to himself, No, I can no longer continue like this. My mother went through pains because of me, and I'm currently passing through pains. My story shall be rewritten. There must be a new page in my life. The God of Israel will surely look into my case. 
Brethren, in the days of Jabez, there were prophets of old with a divine authenticity. Those who originated the statement, Thor says the Lord. But Jabez, who was in pain, Jabez, whose life was enshambled, Jabez, who was futureless and divisionless about his life, went down on his knees. He started the battle on his knees and they won it on his knees. He knew there were prophets, but he didn't go to them. He said to himself, I can do this. Before I was born, God knew me. Before my mother conceived me, he knew my name. He counted the hair on my head. And Jabez humbly embarked on this journey through prayers. And there was a miraculous changeover in his life. In the life of Jabez. Now, I want to ask somebody this day. If Jabez of all people could succeed with this uncommon method. Then why this madness of pray for me, pray for me. Sister, pray for me. Brother, pray for me. Prophet, pray for me. This pray for me of a thing is a major reason why many witch doctors and many fake ministers and prophets have been patronized in their businesses. You call yourself a child of God, but you make yourself spiritually inferior. I am not saying that one does not need prayers from a man of God. No, that is not the point I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make here. There are cases that call for corporate anointing or higher anointing, so to speak. But today, the cases that must make most people to run helter skelter are the cases which simple prayers can change. But because of unfaithfulness and the ignorance of the word of God, some people now think that prayers can only be answered through a man of God or a prayer warrior. My friend, stop belittling yourself. Yes, it is true that we are not equal in anointing. But let me tell you the truth. The poorest member who is not recognized in a church may be closer to the throne of mercy than the man of God who is a miracle performer or a crowd puller. What am I saying really? I am saying that the solution to your problem is calculus. And the pray more for the days are evil. Hear me clearly. Do you want to turn around for good in your life? Do you want to be a champion? Do you want to confuse the language of your enemies? Do you want to be more than conqueror? Do you want to rise above hate? Do you want to discover your real value? Do you, I mean, do you want to be uncaged from the shackles of the wicked master? Then you should talk less and pray more. If you want to be who God wants you to be, talk less and pray more. For he that sincerely kneels before God can stand against any evil authority. Take it again. Whosoever that sincerely kneels before God can stand against any evil authority. Why are you complaining so much? My friend, we are not fighting for victory. We are fighting from victory. Take it again. We are not fighting for victory. We are fighting from guaranteed victory Jesus had won for us. Jesus said that we should cheer up for he has overcome the world. Our duty now is to maintain our stand on a victorious position so that the enemy will not rob us of our victory prize. I want you to stop calling anything that confronts you a problem. But you call it, call them challenges. Because problem sounds more of negative to me. You see, these challenges you have, I tell you, you must battle them on your knees. You start the battle on your knees and win it on your knees. Complaining is not a way out. Murmuring is not a way out. 
Crying is not a way out. The way out is prayer. You should unleash a holy anger against the kingdom of darkness. You should execute a holy rebellion against the kingdom of darkness. Because Jesus said in John Gospel chapter 16 verse 24, You don't have because you have not asked. Ask anything in my name and my father will grant it to you that your joy may be complete. Look at what Jabez requested. He prayed that God of Israel should bless him, should give him much land. Be with me, Lord, and keep me from anything, any evil that will cause me pain. And the Bible says in the last verse, the verse 10, and the God who granted him what he prayed for. My dear, what are those challenges that you have that gives you sleepless nights? Is it fruit of the womb? Financial breakthrough, salvation, healing, promotion, deliverance from premature death in your family. Maybe your family has generational failure as a curse and you are crying. I know that you have done so much to overcome all this to no avail. But I tell you today that there is only one thing you have not done. And that is perseverance in prayers. Yes. You must take the bull by the horn. You must fight it on your knees. Once and for all. That your life today. Is the greatest opportunity God gave you. To hear this message. Because. That your life means there is hope. After all. There are some of your mates and colleagues. That are in graveyards. Why do people find it difficult to talk with God? They prefer talking with men. To talk with God is praying. Why talking with men is discussion. Mere discussion. And that is where the problem is. Men and women can talk in the market squares, offices, in schools, different places. People can talk from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. without getting tired. But to talk to the America only one hour is difficult for them. Why is it difficult for you to talk with the America, to have time with God? Have you seen where your problem is? If you cut off from God, you can do absolutely nothing. You know, your tongue will save you in prayers than talking. Yes. Talking too much will cause you harm. There are people who are in different troubles because of their tongue. Some are in prison. Some are in hospital. Some are in various hardships. While others are in their early graves because of their tongue. Wherever you are listening to me now, I advise you to talk less and pray more for the days are evil. Prayer, prayer, yes. Prayer is the antidote. Have you asked yourself, why is it that devil hardly fight against preaching the gospel? Devil himself can even preach and participate in evangelical outreach. After all, he quoted scriptures to Jesus. Devil also hardly fights singing. That is where he has the best position. Remember, he was the leader of the heavenly choir. But to pray a meeting, if you organize a prayer meeting, just try it and you see an attack. If you are not alive in the spirit, you will receive various attacks. Because with the prayers, you will pollute his kingdom. With the prayers, you will cause quake in the kingdom of darkness. With the prayers, you will disconnect their spiritual networking. And they confuse the language of demons and their agents. Have you seen where somebody is preaching and is sleeping at the same time? No. What of singing and sleeping? No. But sleeping during prayers is a very common disease. A very common problem. Even prayers during, sleeping during prayers can make somebody to so gare in the washing water or on the floor. And that is an attack. Most people can stay awake in the social gathering for 24 hours. 
But in God's presence, just for one hour, they begin to nod their heads. The greater disadvantage Satan can use against you is too much talking. Because when you talk too much, some of the words you use will stand against you when you want to pray. But if you talk less and pray more, you will be a firebrand. You will be a troublemaker against the kingdom of darkness. Why? Because prayers will fortify you in case of necessity or eventuality. Prayers will make you a victor because a victor is a winner while a victim is a loser. Now ask yourself, are you a victor or are you a victim? Yes. Satan complains against a victor. Why a victim complains against Satan? Do you know why most people do not have effective results in prayers? They lack adequate preparation. What are the preparations? You must confess and in the book your sins and make sure your hearts are dominated by the word of God. Because that is the sword of the spirit you will use in prayers. It is not how long you pray or shout that brings the result. Take for instance the footballers. Any victory a club gets is not from the pitch of football, but in training. Yes, the success of examination is not in the exam hall, but in the studies before the exam. What am I saying? Many lack adequate preparation. Many lack concentration before God and the during prayer. Prayer is not what you rush into. If you rush into prayers, you will rush out. How can you ask people to write a prayer request in a gathering of children of God? They will begin to look for papers on the floor. Dirty papers, pieces of papers to write to God. But an application to a human being for job, they will go and get full scar and the very attractive envelope. Let me tell you, your input will determine your output. If you take God serious, God will take you serious. God is too busy for this nonsensical behavior. If you must be a champion in this race and face your challenges and be become victorious, you must talk less and be pray more. Because champion produces results, not complain. Why should somebody claim to be a Christian and is such a person complains against witches or wizards? In fact, any Christian who dies as a result of witches' attack is not worthy to be buried by the church. Yes, because that cause is a disgrace and an object of caricature, object of mockery. Satan doesn't want to see you rejoicing. He wants you to be complaining and that is what you are doing. You know, most people pay attention, 90% attention to their problems, their challenges, than God who is the solver and the way out. That's why most people keep on lamenting and mentioning the name of Satan during prayers, even more than they mention God. That is what Satan wants. He wants to be noticed. Even in human beings, anyone who is troublesome wants his or her name to be in the front line of any discussion. If you are observant, you will notice that mostly in Africa, whenever people gather to pray, they can mention them for 90 times and they mention God 10 times. It is a wrong method. I tell you, if you focus more on God, who is the way out and the ignore the devil most times, you will make him useless. And the Bible says in Hebrew 12 too, that we should keep looking unto Jesus, for he is the author and the finisher of our faith. Oh yes! Stop taking rest in the spirit. Spiritual holidays is very dangerous. There is no rest in the spiritual realm because if you rest, you rust. Yes. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 26 verse 40, he told Peter and Co, can't you keep watch with me at least one hour? That we should watch and pray not to fall into temptation. That the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak. The major problem most people have today is that the flesh controls the spirit. When the flesh controls your spirit, 
It makes out nonsense of their spiritual exercise. That is why your condition is like this. Failure in everything. People around you who want to address you now as a failure specialist. Because you are prayerless. But if you can go back on your knees and consider your private devotion, only then will you realize that the more you pray, the more powerful you become. But the less you pray, the more powerless you become. If you are prayerless, in the daytime, you may likely to have bad day. In the night, you may likely to have nightmare. Prayer is the master key. My dear, do not be spiritually careless. Because Satan is an opportunist. Any single mistake, he will strike. That is why we are instructed to pray in season and out of season. In every occasion. Stop counting your failure. How many times you have failed does not matter. But how many times do you rise? That is what makes a champion. This message is meant to catapult you into action. Yes. Because many soldiers of Christ, whose their prayers we are disturbing, the ancestral demons, the territorial demons, the atmospheric demons, the Abaddon spirit, the succubus and the incubus, the incumba, those soldiers are now in spiritual holidays. Ah, many prayer warriors who we are praying for people in the past, praying people out of their problems, are now under the captivity of the wicked master. Why? Because they have backslided. If you want to have effective result in your prayers, you must be spiritually current. There are some prayer ministers I know when they stand to pray without saying a word, only their presence, every demon around their vicinity will go and transfer on their own account. Because those demons really tested them and discovered that superior power is a superior power. For darkness can never comprehend light. Oh yes! When power encounters power, the lesser power we bow. A prayerless Christian is always a failure. A prayerless Christian is always a victim that complains always. But if you are powerful, that you are your tenant who is your courtic, or your neighbor in the market square, or your colleague in the office, who is a witch or wizard, should be the one complaining against you. Yes. Why do you want to pack out because of an attack? If you try it, you have made yourself an object of disgrace. How can you be a soldier who wears camouflage, carries gun loaded with bullets, and you are running away from your opponent? If you have your Bible and you wear good clothes, attend the church activities always, but you don't know how to pray, that means you are a toothless bulldog. If you have any agent of darkness around you, they should be the one to pack out because of you. You don't know your value. There was, there was a day passengers were traveling in a bus. When a brother finished preaching in that bus, a man who spoke up and he challenged the brother. He challenged the power of God. He said, I don't believe in all this trash, all this rubbish you say, that God is this, that God is that. This man brought out an egg. And he said to everyone in that bus, Whoever that breaks this egg in this bus will convince me that God is this. Ha. Everyone in the bus tried to break that egg to no avail. They hit the egg in every object in the bus. The egg didn't break. The young man who preached took that egg and he rose it up. He said, Father in heaven, the day you created these objects, you called it egg. But I don't know what this man called it. I am on your side as your oracle. And you call this egg, and the egg, that is what it is. Let every other power be seized at this moment. In the mighty name of Jesus, I break this egg. He hit that egg on the floor of that vehicle, and the egg broke. The man wanted to quarrel with him because it affected him negatively. But God intervened. 
He later come down and they receive counsel. He later become a born again. Hallelujah, somebody. Prayer has no formula. The Bible says that you should pray according to the need of the Holy Spirit. Yes, you don't use somebody's method. Because devil knows the photocopy and the original method. Like the seven sons of Skiva. They use photocopy method and they were attacked. If you don't know what you want and you know how to go about it, you will go back empty-handed anytime you come before God. Let me tell you that native doctors trust in their charms. Yes, court members trust in their satanic powers. Magicians also have so much trust in their magical powers. Why shouldn't Christians trust in the word of God and the power of prayers? His word is our spiritual misery. Why prayer is the fire that can send the kingdom of darkness ablaze? What am I saying? There is a problem. There is, there is danger ahead. Many people are living in bondage. There is a spiritual catastrophe escalating into a, 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 a wider cataclysm. Let me tell you. If you stop the habit of praying, you will start the habit of complaining. Yes, running from pillar to post. So many people are in spiritual handcuffs, spiritual mess, spiritual degradation, and they are helpless. This world is not a playing ground, it's a battlefield. I have seen people who pay money, they, they, they pay somebody money to fast for them and also pray for them. That is an ignorance. If somebody can pray for you, also fast for you, the person should also repent for you. And you believe that God will answer such prayers. My dear, why are you crying? Have you accepted defeat? Have you admitted failure? Satan knows that this message is meant for to uplift you. This message is meant for your victory. Yes, have you experienced a thought from Yahweh in your life? If you have not, expect one now. I mean now, as this message goes on. Because where you are trying to pursue, that is where God will start. This message has the capability to uplift you from the dungeon where your shattered situation kept you. Abnormal situation requires uh, extraordinary prayers. Radical one for that matter. Look at Anna. Mommy Anna of old, the mother of Samuel. A mother indeed, a woman who, who knew what she wanted. Have your time and read first Samuel chapter 1, verse 1 follow you. Anna and the Penina were the two wives of Elkanah. Penina had children, why Anna had none? Penina was making caricature of Anna. But Anna was provoked into prayers because of pains and agony. A day came, she made up her mind that she would fight to finish that day. She went to Shiloh Temple and they tore her heart before the Lord. She prayed out her sorrow and the bitterness. She prayed open heartedly and spontaneously, so much so that the high priest, Eli, who sat by the doorpost of the temple, came and they accused her of being drunk. But she explained herself to the high priest. And the man of God consoled her. And also built her faith by making a decree. Ah, by speaking into her life. And the Bible says that God answered the prayer of Anna. Apart from somewhere, Anna had another five children making them sins in all. What are the lessons from Anna's experiences? Number one. Anna never responded angrily or in quarrelsome manners to Penina. She kept mute, waiting upon the Lord. Number two, when Anna came to Shiloh, she saw the high priest Ella at the doorpost, but she never went to him for prayers. Ella was the first class prophet, priest in his days. Anna decided to make use of her knees, like Jacob did in Genesis chapter 32 verse 26 I will never let you go unless you bless me 
and he was blessed mightily. Perseverance and defense. We are the yastic, the parameter and the barometer these people apply. Let me tell somebody, if you offer uncommon prayers, you will have uncommon results. Ah, the secret of effective prayers lies in, 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 in patience, perseverance and faith. And also a heart free from grudges. If you follow these rules, God will not just grant you what you desire, the desires of your heart. He will also grant you what you desire. Because what you desire may be little from what God has in store for you. Anna expected one, and they finally got six. After the age of menopause, all this happened between the age of 60s and 70s. Prayer should be the habit here, not talking too much, not complaining. A person who talks too much does a little. And let me tell you that a minute's favor from God is far better than 100 years labor of a man. Convert your talking into prayers and you will see God in action. The prayer we are talking about here is not a copy and paste method. Yes. You know, the way some people prepare speech or address, they will read before human beings. Very wonderful. But the praying before God, most people talk to God anyhow. There are three major reasons why God answers prayers. Number one, God can answer prayer to fulfill his words. Number two, he can answer prayer because of the commitment of his servant, the man of God, I mean, the, the, that guides the congregation. Number three, he can equally answer prayer because of the heart of the recipient, the person who is in need of the answers. So, if you have prayed for a long time and no results, I urge you to, to, to leave your comfort zone. Yes, to avoid distraction. Because God doesn't speak in a noisy place. For you to have effective communication with God, you need absolute sanity and tranquility. The more you deny yourself pleasure, the more you render the demons around you powerless and useless. Leaving your comfort zone will even make you to subdue the flesh so that you can rise in the spirit. There are so many things that can hinder prayers. But I will mention few. For your prayers to work, you must, I mean, you must do away with the gossip, malice, anger, greed, and unforgiving spirits. Then, the things you must apply are love, faith, patience, endurance, humility, chastity, and charity. If you are a child of God, with a peculiar virtue. Mind you, you will have a peculiar trial in order to have peculiar results. Yes. Let's look at some of these virtues. You know, let's discuss them briefly. Love is the ultimate virtue you need to attract God's attention. God and love are like bees and honey. Yes. Now, patience and endurance are necessary. Why you must wait upon the Lord? Yes, you need patience and endurance. In that your situation, you need to endure. Don't murmur. Remember Anna. Anna didn't murmur. Joseph in prison did not murmur. Job didn't murmur. The sick man at the pool of Bethesda, whom I may describe as a professor in sickness, had patience and endurance. If you run out of patience with God, Ah, you will misunderstand God, though, and if you misunderstand God, you are in trouble. Humility. Humility, of course, humility is a foundation of holiness. Jesus said in Matthew eleven twenty nine, 29, Imitate me because I am meek and humble. If you pray with the pride, it becomes hypocritical prayers. And the prayers of the Pharisees and the God will nullify it. The next thing is chastity. Of course, without striving for holiness, no guarantee for answers in your prayers. Because devil will have platform to accuse you because of numerous sins you commit. Your action on daily basis, both indoor and outdoor, must correspond with the word of God. Only on this condition 
Can you make a decree and it will come to pass? Another thing is charity. Charity is what you use to water the ground. Because if you show compassion to others, God will do the same to you. No matter how little you have, there are those you are better than. Remember, Joseph interpreted other people's dreams before his own came to pass. Blessed are those who are merciful to others, for they shall obtain mercy. Finally, faith. Faith is the ladder we used to climb to the throne of mercy. Faith is also it's like a switch. After connecting various wires, you will use faith to switch on the lights. Faith is simply to say thank you, Jesus, before the miracle comes. Yes. You see, faith played a major role in the prayers of Anna, Jabez, Paul and Silas, Daniel, Joseph, Shadrach and Cole. I will use only three persons here and they explain how faith moves God. I want to talk about Daniel, Joseph, Shadrach and the Cole. You know, Daniel who saw the lions dance where they wanted to throw him inside. And he knew that those lions were not fed for days. So that they could so that he could be devoured in few seconds by the lions. But Daniel maintained his ground by faith. After watching this frightening situation, in the case of Joseph, John knew that if he accepts the immoral request of his mother while in prison, probably after one week his mother would cut corners you know and get him out of that place but joseph a faithful and a covenant child of god maintained his faith with the holy principles he told his mother to her face i cannot do such a wicked thing unto my god ah let me say something let me speak the mind of joseph here I know and I can defend it to the core that Joe was ready to spend five to ten years in that prison. If he could endure two years, he could also spend more than that. He made up his mind. That is an exceptional case. My last point here is about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abadnego. Yes, I want to tell you that the fate of these three young men. We are unique. Number one, they were bold enough to disobey the king. Yes, not to bow down to the golden statue. Number two, they saw the furnace of fire awaiting them as punishment. Let me tell you my mind. The fourth man in fire wouldn't have come if not the risky statement they made. Incredible fate they displayed before the king. They said, we have a God we bow down to, the God of Israel. Even if our God did not answer us, we cannot bow down to this idol. Ah, scandal bobo. They saw the fire and they were not blindfolded. The first man in fire came down and they were, he, he didn't reveal to them that he will join them in that fire. But because of these statements, they were ready to die for Jesus. When they said that, the king got mad. Jesus also rose in anger because of the, the facts they displayed. The fact that fact was incredible, impeccable. The battle became between Jesus and the Nebuchadnezzar. The king did his worst by casting them into fire. There and then, the fourth man in fire landed in that fire. What challenged my faith was that even when they were brought closer to that fire, they didn't change their statements. That was a clear picture of what Jesus meant by if you hate your life for my sake, you will find it. Brethren, what are you still waiting for? Are you still complaining? Church, what are we doing? Should we still be talking money, money, money without prayer, prayer, prayer? Many churches have reservoir of money with the dry well of prayers, not testimonies. And Jesus said, my father's house is a house of prayer. 
not bank and not dance of robbers. You know, Jesus was not referring to highway robbers. You know, there are people I, I may call holy robbers. Those who turn the house of God into business empires. When a, a poor man comes to the church with a problem for prayers, they will tell him to carry it as a cross. But if it were a rich man, emergency prayers will be conducted. That is carnality. The Lord has taken us this far that somebody must have started praying before now. Pray, pray, pray. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Fight those challenges. Fight them for to finish in prayers. Yeah, pray as if the world is coming to an end. I pray for unfold anointing. Yes. At this moment in your life. Pray the way you have never done before. Make it a do or die affair in the spirit. Stop talking and you start praying. Stop complaining and you start praying. Let the weak say that they are strong. Let the poor say that they are rich. And let the sick say that they are healed. Your testimonies must come today. Even those who have not encountered Christ has given testimonies what of you. Prayers will restore the joy and the hope Satan has stolen away from you. Because when you rejoice, devil has heard it. But if you start complaining, devil rejoices. Pour out your heart for God in prayer. Before his throne of mercy. Ask God to decrease your mortal strength and he increase himself in you. Prayer is not what you offer only when you have problems. Prayer is what you should make a habit even when the going is good. One thing I know for sure is that prayers fortify you. It will make you a spiritual striker, not a defender. Yes, strikers are the most wanted in the world of football because victory lies in their hands. I can feel the full presence of God this hour. I can perceive transformation in your life and destiny. Bring out your problems now beneath the cross. Beneath the cross, there is salvation. Beneath the cross, there is favor. Beneath the cross, there is divine mercy. All these things will take place in your life. For Bible says in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, Jesus said, He granted us automatic invitation to everyone that has a body. To bring it beneath the cross. Don't condemn yourself as a sinner. He said, come be where you are. Salvation is for you right now. What is the doctor's report about your sickness? Is it chronic one? Just join us in prayers. Doctor's report is good, but Jesus has the final say. Ah, the organs in your body, he has this papers. What is that your case that will make you to pay somebody for prayer? Join us by faith, not by sight. The God we are praying to is the impossibility specialist. Pray, pray, pray. Don't be tired. No problem is bigger than God. Is it premature death in your family? I, I want you to begin to cancel it at this moment. Is it failure of different kinds in your life? Cancel it by faith. It works out. It's not magic. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He changed not. Is it promotion? Protection? Pray, he can do it. He has done it before, and I swear in my life, he can do it again. He said this at 50 50. Call me in the days of trouble. I will answer you. What are those things troubling you, sister? Why can't you join us in prayer? He is the giver of child. Child is a gift from God. You don't seek for the fruit of the womb. You wait upon the Lord. Yes. He owns the fruit of the womb. And I believe that if you have the faith like Mommy Anna, now, I say now, he gave Anna six in all. And he gave Abraham and Sarah Isaac. He gave Zachariah and Elizabeth, John the Baptist, the great, the voice in the wilderness. God cannot change because of you. He cannot. He can do it. Anna fought the battle in prayers. Jacob fought the battle in prayers. Joseph did the same. Paul and Silas he prayed. And the sang that the Holy Spirit landed in prison with earthquake. Who says you are a woman who cannot carry a baby again? 
Place your hands on your womb and be join us in prayers. Ask God for mercy. Ask Him for mercy. And you will experience quake in your womb right now. Stretch your hands. Whenever you feel that pain at this moment, receive healing in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I decree healing at this moment to any sickness. I don't care to know the language. Because my God who says that healing is the bread of his children. Claim it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I want to prophesy in your life at this hour. You are destiny. I want to prophesy your background to the foundation of your family. Whatever they have taken your pictures to, or your name, is it on the monitoring mirror? Is it on a padlock? And child of God, listen to me. I prophesy at this hour. Whether they lay, they lay your name on an evil tree, any gadget they use against you, I prophesy this moment by the anointing of the Holy Spirit that breaks every yoke. May all their property catch fire in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I declare you freedom. I declare your freedom. I declare your freedom at this hour. I make their environment unconducive for them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Yes. Claim your freedom. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 3 17, the where Holy Spirit dwells, there is freedom. Freedom is for you. Are you in a spiritual cage? Yes, but look. When the evil but look or evil gates against your life, they work against you. I want you to claim your freedom at this hour in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Any evil hand, Prince of Persia, that seizes your blessings in the spiritual world. May that hand catch fire. May that hand wither at this moment. Do it in the dream. Swimming in the dream. Having a tacos in the dream. As a result of spiritual husband or wife. I cost that spirit at this hour. They cause you a series of disappointments in your marriage. Or a crisis in your home. By the virtue of this message. I want you to receive your freedom. May the anointing of the Holy Spirit break every you. Yes. I break any covenant you have with the marine kingdom. Every covenant you have with the territorial demons, contagious demons, ancestral demons, atmospheric spirits, incubus, succubus, incumba, abandoned spirits that disconnect your prayer life. In the mighty name of Jesus, I cause your powers to cease. I cause your powers to cease. I cause your powers to cease. May your freedom manifest right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I build Holy Ghost fire around you as a wall. Yes. Around you, and I invoke the angels of Psalm 91, verse 11 and 12 to guide you always, lest you dash your feet on the stone. Through these prayers and the testimonies, may the name of the Father Almighty be glorified in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray, Amen. Yes, I cover your salvation, I cover your blessings, I cover your freedom, everything that God has granted you at this moment, everything God has restored. I cover all of them with the blood of Jesus. Yes, may they be permanent. Sister, congratulations. Get ready to buy babies' wears. By this time next year, ah, you shall go to church for child dedication. Clap it. Whenever you feel that pain before prayers, check it right now. Because you are free, I perceive your freedom. I perceive your healing. Jesus said that you are free. And when Jesus sets you free, you are free indeed. By this time tomorrow, go to the hospital and have another test. Is it overdue pregnancy? I am watching your level before. Right now, your level is coming. And it's a self delivery. Claim it. If I've not mentioned your case, don't worry. Don't bother. Is it kidney? Is it liver? Is it leukemia? Is it cancer? Ulcer? Any kind of sickness? Jesus knows it all. And he will not pass you by. It will come to pass. Have patience. Congratulations to you all. All my listeners, my dearest present Christ, begin to thank God in faith because your own miracle will manifest as soon as possible. Nothing shall stop it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.